put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Desperado Movie Review. Since the events of the first film, El Mariachi, who continues to have no name, is going around killing drug dealers. I guess Moko was a drug dealer, it was never really specified. Now, he isn't particularly fond of that, but, you know, he he wants his revenge, so, you know, he, he's decided that the current one, by the name of Bucho, is going to be the last one. And he's partnered up with Steve Buscemi, who sort of scouts out places for him. He, and, and through Buscemi, he finds out that the town they've now gotten to is indeed where Bucho is residing on a ranch, and so he goes about trying to find him. And along the way he meets Salma Hayek, who is just ungodly sultry and sexy in this film. Bucho himself has a bit of an anger management issue and he has recently gotten his limousine, I guess it is, back from the... I don't know exactly, but they've armor-plated it and yeah, it's it's sort of like a tank now, you know, except you know, no, no actual guns on it, but it's very handy for shooting from the car. And there's this mysterious man in town, played impeccably by Danny Trejo, who just, just his face. You know, you could just film that guy's face and that would be awesome just by itself, just by the sheer badassitude of that face. And several of the times you see him, he's got a knife in his hand. and kind of makes you wonder what exactly he's there to do. And he never says anything, which is awesome. Now, this is in part a sort of remake of El Mariachi, you know, with a bigger budget, but really it is very much also a sequel. It is not the same story, although it does, you know, there are a lot of similarities, and there's actually a lot of nice little winks and nods at, you know, towards El Mariachi. So if you've seen El Mariachi and then you watch this, there's a lot of cool little references that you'll, you know, get a kick out of. There are a number of positives regarding this film, so I will try to cover all of them before I get to the bad. The casting is great. I've already mentioned Selma Hayek. The bad guy, Bucho, is played by Joaquim de Almeida or something like that. I probably butchered that horribly. I've seen him in nothing else, but he is pretty good here. He's, you know... It's, it's again this, you know, he dresses in white and he's closer to Caucasian, or at least in, in basic appearance, than, you know, a lot of the guys around him. You know, he's not, you know, terribly dark-skinned. And, you know, it's, it's not the same character as Moko. And he is, you know, yeah, it's... 
he's he's good enough as a villain, certainly. The you know title role, although Carlos Gallardo, Gallardo, Gallarda, I suppose it should be. Oh, my old Spanish teacher is gonna smack me over the head. Does return, but in a much smaller role. I mean, it, it reeks of awesome, but it's still a much smaller role. Instead, El Mariachi himself is now played by Antonio Banderas, who, in addition to having the star power to get you know, more people interested, is just in general a really good choice. He has the charm and charisma, and he can both kind of make you pity him a little bit and laugh at him and with him, as well as just pull off this the action hero thing, you know. The music is phenomenal, you know. It, it still has this real nice, you know, like Mexican, Spanish kind of flavor, and it just fits every single scene, you know. There are like, there are ballads, there's, you know, more upbeat music, there's fast-paced music, and yeah, all of it fits really well, and it's just, it's a joy to listen to you know, in addition to how well it fits. I've actually, I got the soundtrack as well, and you know, thoroughly enjoy it. There is a cameo appearance by Quentin Tarantino which demands mentioning because he's just so much fun in it, you know. It's really just, I, he's not the greatest actor around, but in this, I'm not sure he really had to act. I think they just told him be you, and then rolled camera. And he has this, he tells this joke that you might already know, especially if you're a guy. You know, especially, I suppose, especially if you've ever, like, gone, gone to a bar or gotten drunk or something, you've probably heard this joke at some point. But the way he tells it is just pure gold. And he is just getting so into telling this joke. And just... That actually brings me to, this film is really nicely edited. That's actually one of the best production-wise aspects of it, you know. It's also excellently filmed, but especially the editing. There are these, there are just a million tiny little touches and details that Rodriguez captures and, you know, brings forth, and they just really add to this complete... Mo mosaic, I guess, of, of just the, the world that these people inhabit, which is not quite the real world, it should be noted. You know, but yeah, just these tons of little details that add a little bit to the character, to the situation, you know. The humor is, again, somewhat warped. You know, you have... Uh, there, there's this scene where El Mariachi has his wounds patched up, and there are just... You know, there are several jokes at his expense on account of him being wounded and the basic nature of the situation. The action is great. This is, you know, excuse me, Rodriguez lends, excuse me, quite a bit from John Woo and, you know, similar with, you know, slow motion, dual wielded pistols and you know, a lot of sort of, you know, stunts and, you know, jumping around and, yeah, this this kind of rushing into the action and, you know, one man taking out a ton of people, you know, with pretty remarkable ease when you think about it. Now, yeah, actually with the action, just, I, I could do an entire video on just how much awesome has been fit into the opening sequence, which is, you know, with, with no spoilers, it's Steve Buscemi regaling sort of the myth of El Mariachi, the guitar-carrying, you know, killer of drug dealers. It is just, yeah, am am amazing. And a large part of that is kind of just the the setup, the way it's filmed, the way it's lit. 
and the, the general editing, but I'd say 50% of the credit for how amazing that scene is. I mean, that, that scene will grow hair on your chest. You know, I'm, I'm actually not entirely sure women should even watch this movie. No, it... 50% of it is Steve Buscemi's performance, the way he tells it, and the exact, like, words he chooses, and just his entire, you know, you could watch just the entire film just for the, you know, he doesn't have that terrible, too terribly large of a role, but, you know, it was actually written specifically for him, and you can really tell. It, it really uses his strength, strengths. Now, the action, there, there is a pretty good amount of it. It's all quite well choreographed, and it actually, it has this real flavor of sort of a modern-day spaghetti western, you know, with sort of actually... El Mariachi must have been around New York because he stole taxi drivers, you know, that, that sling for the gun that, you know, shoves it, that, you know, thrusts it into his hand. He stole it, made a duplicate, and yeah, he's got two. So in place of, you know, very quickly unholstering his pistol, he just, you know, yeah, makes his pistols slingshot out into his hands. Excuse me. The film has quite a bit of testosterone. It's, the, the levels are through the roof, and yet it's not at the level where you're ODing like in something like Blade 2, in my personal opinion. I suppose that more or less covers the positive, and that, I'm afraid, does bring me to the negative. This is entirely style without substance. There is really nothing going on here. There's, a, again, just this little bit of sort of thematic, you know, stuff kind of hinted at, but it's never particularly amounts to anything, you know, and, and at the end of the day, this is just, you know, all icing and no cake. There, there's nothing here, really. You know, watching just the action sequences of this movie will have the same effect on you as watching the entire movie. Actually, you should probably do that at least, you know, once you watch the entire thing through once, because it'll save you time, and there's really almost nothing to, you know, get out of that extra time. You know, don't get me wrong, it's you know, the, the action is great, and as is the tension when, you know, whenever the film goes for tension, it succeeds quite nicely. And there's certainly a nice amount of build-up to the, you know, what, the, the shootouts get to be increasingly epic. And the, in fact, the final one, or the, yes, essentially the final one, although it was apparently not always intended to be the final one, has just every, you know, everyone who is part of it, you know, you see them readying their guns and on their way to the, you know, where they will all be meeting and, you know, duking it out. And, yeah, you know, there's, it's, it's very enjoyable, but that really is all there is to it. You know, I've, I literally finished watching the movie mere minutes before I started recording this video, and it just, I mean, I've watched it a lot of times, so that's part of it, but it just leaves very little of an impression on me. There was actually a bunch of stuff I'd forgotten, because it leaves that little of an impression on you. And that's not, it's not entirely, it's not Rodriguez's direction, and it's not his editing, it's his writing, mainly. You know, when he does not write... Sin City, one of his best movies. He just needs someone else to do the writing for him, and he's just... he's good, you know? that That is the only aspect of filmmaking that he just does not do well, you know? There, you know, there are even... there, there are some really cool ideas. I've already mentioned, you know, Danny Trejo, the car with the armor plating, you know? All these things, just very cool ideas, you know. 
but then, you know, there, there are these things that never actually amount to anything. There's this new recruit of Buchos who, you know, he's in several scenes and, you know, I'd say it draws it. Yeah, yeah, the film draws attention to him. And at the end of the day, there's really nothing special. There, there's no, you know, resolution or... There's nothing that actually comes out of that, you know. Now, the the acting is quite good for the most part. There's not particularly anyone who's outright bad. The film does have some continuity issues, especially with, you know, I'm not talking like, you know, from one shot to the other. I'm talking you know, plot continuity, where, yeah, I, I can't give it any of it away here, I'll go into it in the spoiler video, but, yeah, and, and it's distracting, frankly. But, yeah, you know, 95 minutes, not counting the end credits, so, well, if you have male genitalia, you need to watch this at least once, that's, that's a given, but, yeah, it's, it's not entirely a good movie, it's just filmed well, it's fun, funny, and, you know, both of those, it's quite hot, and the, yeah, it's, it's enjoyable, but, you know, without any lasting taste, it's, it's fast food, essentially, you know, it, you know, wh where the previous movie was a bit distance, distanced from, you know, El Mariachi, the movie, is not a Hollywood action movie. It's, you know, it avoids a lot of cliches. This one dives right into the, you know, sea of cliches, and, yeah, it gets soaked, and at the end of the day, you can't completely tell that it isn't just... You know, the, the one thing it has that somewhat separates it is this sort of Mexican-Spanish flavor to it, you know. It's, it's not American, but it might as well be other than this sort of aspect of the tone. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.